crown molding. You probably are used to seeing crown molding installed like this. Between the wall and the ceiling. And when you do that, you have two places to drive a nail. One into the ceiling and one into the wall. You find the studs, you drive your nails, and the thing stays up after you caulk it. The caulk holds it mostly anyway. That's one way traditionally. Another way is to actually do it on furniture. So when you take it, let's say this is a piece of a cabinet, which is what I'm doing right now. If you put your crown molding on there, because that's the look that we want on the cabinet, there's really no place for you to drive a nail. That's gonna cause this to split, and it'll also, it'll be too flimsy and it won't really stay on. So the better approach in this situation is to create a backing block. And that would be just a piece of pine that you cut to actually fit behind the crown molding. All right, that sits on the cabinet. The backing block sits right behind it. Now the challenge there is you gotta cut it at an angle so that it actually fits flat. All right, so to do that, you have to figure out that angle. So the way that I did that is I actually took my crown molding and I used this as a straight edge. This is a square edge of paper right here. So I put this on the paper so that it's flat with this edge. I traced it out and I extended that line and then I also drew a perpendicular line to here to just show that's where I'm going to fold it. Now if you have a protractor like you had from geometry class you could figure this out just using a protractor. I couldn't get my hands on one so I have my framing square. It works the same way. I'm just going to hold the paper right against the bottom there and I'm going to use this as a pivot and when you make it parallel with that line you then read it here and it shows about 37 degrees. This is not an exact science but you got to try it a couple times to make sure you get it right. So you really can't do this without a table saw unfortunately. So if you don't have one you're going to have to find a friend that does. But what I've done is I have set the table saw at 37 degrees. You can see it down here, 37 degrees. And I've got scraps of wood from another project that I had, and I'm gonna run them through to actually cut two pieces with the angle on it, the right direction. Two pieces out of one cut. This is a feather board that's actually gonna hold the wood down against the table as I'm cutting. I'm definitely using the guard on this one and I'm using push sticks to keep my hands away from the blade. and there you can see what we're looking for. And what's gonna happen if this is the top of the cabinet or the edge of the, whatever it is I'm putting the crown molding on, now you see I've got a place to nail my crown molding and I can use this to actually screw down into the wood. That serves two purposes on this project that I'm working on right now in that I can make it removable. I'll nail the crown molding into the backer board I'll screw the backer board into my cabinet and I can unscrew it, take it off for transport because that's what I need to do because I'm running this project to Florida.
As you can see, the trailer is here ready to be loaded and I'm still working on the furniture. So I brought it down here to the garage where it'll be easier for me to cut the rest of the crown molding and put it on and then take it apart and put it right into, into the trailer. So you recall this picture that showed the crown molding normally goes between the wall and the ceiling. And so the trick to cutting crown molding is actually to do it upside down like this, in this orientation. So what you really want to do is set up your saw like so, so that your crown molding can be held at a, a certain angle and the angle is the same all the way across. What I've done is I've taken a scrap piece of wood and I put it on my, my miter saw with two clamps to hold it in place and I've put them in the right position so that I can cut the crown molding any way that I need to and keep my hands safe. Now this one here is going to be the most difficult because I want this piece to be removable. I didn't miter these two corners, this one right here. So what I'm going to wind up doing is putting a miter here and I'm going to actually cope this corner. You can use coped joints in your corners in your house too because they're very rarely square. So when you're trying to miter corners inside the house, you'll find that they never line up as perfectly as they do on the furniture. So a coke joint is a good thing to know how to do anyway. Now I'm going to start with the coke joint. And the way you do that is you actually start in the same manner that you would if it was an inside miter, which means you're going this way. That'll be the short end, this will be the long end, right? Because it's coming in here. That's how it would be. Now with the piece cut, you might say, what the heck am I going to do about this? But the way you do it is you actually take your pencil and you darken this line right here. And that's the line that you're going to cut with the coping saw. And when I'm done with that, it'll slide right into this. It's the most amazing thing. Right, like that. Visit my website, handydad.tv, for more great ideas, and subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.